guys, it's Jamie and today's video might get very personal because I found my old diary recently and this is not just any old diary. This old diary I kept very specifically about my trans feelings and all of that stuff. I feel like kind of six odd years down the line since I've come out and everything. At the beginning of September it'll be six years since I legally changed my name and it's already over six years since I came out to the first person as trans and started like, you know, it going through my head and stuff all that time ago. I feel quite disconnected from how I felt back then. Not that I want to remember because I do know that I wasn't in the best place and it was a very difficult and confusing time. But I think because I have these diaries and this written record, I think it'd be really interesting to just read a few excerpts. Excerpts? Extracts? Ex Entries to read a few entries to you guys, just as like a look back on how much things have changed and how far I've come. I've got this one, which is like my trans specific one. And then I've got this one, which is just from the time period when like I was realizing stuff. I did have like a little flick through to make sure that they're the right books, but I haven't labeled any specific days. I'm just gonna kind of flick through, which means this is gonna be horrible to edit, but never mind. I'm just gonna kind of flick through and stop on pages and read them out. So for that, I'm gonna need my glasses. Hang on. Okay, I'm ready. I'm gonna start with the trans one. Right, the very first sentence is, I want to know what everyone else sees when they look in the mirror. It's deep already. The concept of not recognizing or accepting what you see is a complicated one to try and explain. Okay, this is cringy. Oh, this is so weird. Maybe I should have like pinpointed some because it's like five minutes in and I've only read like two sentences. While well, I've been recording for five minutes, I will chop the silent me just looking at the book reading out. I was worried that if I transitioned, people wouldn't consider me a real boy and so therefore not want to be with me. Like, I think I'm talking about like relationship type thing. I know it wouldn't be a reason why I wouldn't transition, but it's just a concern like going bald or being rejected, going bald <laughs> or being rejected by family and friends. And then the very next sentence is, feels strange to write this down. Like I'm, <laughs> like I'm sharing things that are too personal to share. And this was just in a private book and now I'm reading it to you guys. I finally made a video about how I'm feeling it's about a minute long, but it explains briefly where I'm at just now. <laughs> I didn't focus the camera right, so the whole thing's just a little bit out of focus. Well done, you younger Jamie. If I make another one, I'll make sure it's in perfect focus. It's really interesting to watch it back because I said some stuff without realising, and it was the first time I'd admitted that I want to do hormones. So it was strange to watch and feel like I was telling myself something that I didn't really want to hear or admit. And then I just skip. I, I wasn't very good at like connecting the sentences. I'm trying to find like a date, but this was probably early 2011. I didn't date this book, which was a bit silly. Wearing a binder instead of a bra is the best feeling. Yes, and not having to wear anything is even better. I ripped my last bra that I had kept and that made me happy. Like a weird but sweet farewell to who I was never meant to be. Damn. <laughs> so I saw that this is all from like the same entry, so it's all from a very, very similar time period. So I saw a counsellor the first time a couple days ago. I quickly realised my mum could help me more than they could. But that's not their fault. I don't think she really understood what I meant by how I was feeling and trans people. I remember that. It was the counsellor at college. I was kind of desperate. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know how I was supposed to like get the ball rolling with like starting hormones and stuff. And so I just went to speak to the college counselor and she was perfectly lovely, but had no clue what I was talking about or no clue on how to help or any advice or anything like that. I did open up quite a bit, mainly because this is to the counselor, mainly because it was like talking to a statue that occasionally came to life to say I had looked worried or sad when I had just spoken. <laughs> Not my kind of thing being stared at and then told how I felt. The only things I feel about my gender right now is anger and being scared. I can finally say it, what I've been building up to all this time and I'm ready. I am a 17 year old transgender man from Essex. Man, that's embarrassing, finally admitting I'm from Essex. <laughs> You're not funny. I've taken a step back and I looked at my situation and I know that so many guys have it much harder than me, but seriously, I'm scared shitless. Just thinking about all the people that will have to know about this, something that is essentially an incredibly personal and private thing, 
not to mention totally terrifying. And now I it's crazy because like in the beginning I was so scared to even admit it to myself, to even the thought of like telling somebody else was scary and almost embarrassing and I felt kind of ashamed. But now it's like complete opposite. I will talk openly about it, I will tell, I can say I'm transgender and it doesn't make me like squirm. I can get the words out easily and yeah, it's just that's crazy. Essentially what happened is I watched a documentary when I was 16 and I kind of related so much to this trans guy in the documentary and I realised that being transgender was a thing. I realised that you could be like physically perceived as female but your gender could be male so your gender and your sex don't have to match up. And that kind of got me thinking like, oh my god, I, like this this just sounds like me. This just sounds like how I felt. So I started looking into it and I kind of like knew, you know, when you know something, but I was so scared to admit it. I really didn't want to admit it. So like I spent quite a long time just thinking about it by myself, writing about it um, to be able to, I think, accept it basically and, and feel ready to say it. But I said here that it isn't always a sudden realization. It's okay to be unsure for a long time. Just because it took a long time to be sure about something doesn't mean it's not the right thing to do. I really did go through a massive denial stage, just never thinking about it. But every so often it would slip through and I'd find myself wondering what life would be like if I did transition. And I'm so glad that younger me, <laughs> this is so weird. Um, why am I getting emotional? Why? I just, just reading back on that, it does bring back memories of how I was feeling. Because I, I knew, I knew, I knew what was going on, but I, I was just like, no, no, it can't be. Like, it, even though in, in some way it was, it was a relief, because I was like, oh my God, I know why I've been feeling like this my whole life. But at the same time, it was like, why? Like, this is, t I can't handle this, this is too hard, so. I am proud of 17, 16, 17 year old me for taking the step and, and being brave enough and accepting it. I don't mean that to sound big headed or anything or like, I'm proud of me. I think it's good to be proud of yourself, but like I am because I know how scared I was back then. I can't deny or hide the fact that going out identifying as male and being referred to as male makes my heart beat faster and a smile spread across my face. Cheesy really cheesy. <laughs> on Friday, I'm seeing a therapist who can help people with gender identity issues. She's dealt with lots of other trans people, so I'm happy that things are actually going to start progressing. I've taken the first step, which is always the hardest one. I'm pretty nervous about it, but at the same time excited about talking to somebody who's had experience and can help. I've just felt stuck in a rut recently with the whole process, so I'm hoping that this can provide a much needed boost in moving forward. <laughs> um, very recently I've been able to talk openly about testosterone being part of my future and not just a maybe because I was, I was really scared to like admit that that's what I wanted to do. Six months ago even the idea <laughs> terrified me and I was just talking to my mum and saying things like I was just androgynous or questioning my gender. That's how I came out to my mum. I said like I had like a bit of confusion over my gender and I talked to her about it but I didn't admit that I wanted any kind of hormone replacement and it's really strange to see how far I've come and I could never see myself going back. I feel exactly the same today reading this diary. Each small progressive step I make to transitioning I know that every point I pass I could never go back. Sometimes I think, what's the big deal? I'm a boy, but just born in the wrong body. And it took me some time to figure that out and accept it. But then other times it's totally overwhelming and I feel like I can't deal with it. This all leads to loads of conflict. I tell people, then I panic and I'm like, shit, did I do the right thing? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, Charlotte and I recently made a video together where I told the story of how I came out to her and this was like just when I'd found these books um, and I thought maybe I'd written it in there, but I hadn't. But it's in this one. I've just found it. Anyway, I told my best friend yesterday by using the lamest way of coming out ever. I basically told her that I was the T in LGBT. So she's pretty awesome and was like, I'll support you if you need anyone to talk to kind of thing. Holy shit, I forgot about that. Then about 30 minutes after I told her, she had to meet a friend. I had to walk with her because she didn't know the way. 
So we were talking on the way there and she says she'll introduce me as her guy friend, Jamie. I was shitting myself about whether I would be read as male or not. Probably the first time I was introduced to somebody as Jamie. And I forgot about it. Well, unless there was a time before that I forgot about as well, that's highly possible. <laughs> so essentially like from now, I've, like that was like nearly the very end of the book. I've come out to everybody, I'm making progress in terms of like getting hormones and everything and it's all looking a little bit more positive. I'm just gonna have a take, take a look in this book because it's more kind of my feelings when I was like denying stuff. Yeah, let's, let's have a look. Oh, I need to change the battery, hold on. Hello, new battery, <laughs> yay. I'm glad I bought spare ones. Yeah, so this book starts in October 2010 and this was just as I started college. So I was 16. Oh. I've told this story as well. There's a time I was in the girls' toilets at college. Before I came out, it was during my first year, but I'd already, like, started having... Yeah, you know, obviously at this point I was already like, oh, but I was still presenting as, as female and everything. So today I went to the toilet. Today I went to the toilet at college to take a wee. To take a wee? <laughs> what, just take it out of the toilet with me? I was washing my hands when a girl walks in, then straight back out again. Very soon after, as I'm just about to leave, a teacher comes in and tells me off for being in the wrong toilet. Pointed to the sign and saying only girls are allowed to use this toilet. I was incredibly embarrassed. It like, it completely messed with my head and, and it really made me think about actually how I was feeling. So it was a horrible thing at the time, but it probably like gave me a kick up the butt to stop denying stuff so much. So I was like, I'm now experiencing a major identity crisis. All my clothes are on the floor and I've been trying to make my hair look different, this isn't right. I should be able to be who I want to be. And then I was just like, I feel like I can't use the toilets at college. This isn't the first time something like this has happened. And then I've just got this like, who am I? Talk about uni, art exam, oh I hate that art exam. Okay, this video is so long, it's split into three files already and I just had to change my memory card because I ran out of space. When I was little, I always thought I was a boy. Not just want to be, but I actually thought I was. Through subconscious, parental and more vocal peer pressure, I started conforming slightly more with female, I've put the quotes, <laughs> but I still never fitted in. And a lot to do with fitting in is being yourself. If you're not yourself and don't accept you for you, then how can anyone else? Talk to mum about the whole, this is early 2011 still, talk to mum about the whole gender confusion thing most embarrassing thing I've done. I've got lots to sort out and I care too much about other people. This is about me and my life, I've got to remember that. And then I just start talking about exams. <laughs> I'm, I'm skipping over loads of just weird stuff about exams and meeting friends in town and going, <laughs> and going places. I always ignored what was in the mirror from neck down and I was doing a great job, <laughs> but I can't ignore it anymore and I'm actually finding myself despising what I see in the mirror. Oh, I want 10 pounds on a scratch card. And that's the end of the diary. I'm on to a third book now. The timeline of this book and the other one obviously overlap because I got an entry that's like, talk to the college counselor today about my gender identity <laughs> was the most awkward slash embarrassing thing I've ever done and was completely useless. I want stubble. Just a random sentence at the end, I want stubble. Well, you've got a beard now. <laughs> I had a total breakdown last night. I haven't cried like that for so long. It was horrible at the time, but I feel better having done it. I was feeling down all evening. And then I went to the toilet and I noticed my period had started, which set me off. Yeah. I just, I just skipped like to the end of the book. It's gone from like the beginning of 2011 when I'd only just kind of started accepting things and, and actually thinking about it and writing about it and talking to people to the end of September 2012 and this was like I started tea in January 2012 and had surgery in August 2012 so I was like just post off. I've been really distracted with top surgery life has been amazing since I got it done I'm one and a half months post off now I didn't write anything from the end of July to end of September so I don't have anything about actually getting top surgery in here and that's the end of the book <sighs> that was very weird. I've probably been looking through the book for like an hour because not all the entries about being trans, some of them are very, very personal. Um, 
but I'm, I'm glad I did that because I feel, I, I, I thought, you know, like I, I was like, I know I've come such a long way since then, but now I feel like I've come even further than I thought I had. And that's crazy. Although it's kind of, it's kind of difficult as I can't speak. I can't speak, sorry. Um, that was just a bit weird. It's just a bit weird. I think it's difficult as it was to read and to think back and kind of remember everything that was happening and how I was feeling back then. I'm so glad that I wrote it down because I remember at the time it really helped me and I completely forgot but I way earlier in this video I read an entry about making a video and it wasn't ever going to get posted anywhere but I said making that video and hearing myself say things that I hadn't fully admitted yet it was like telling myself stuff and that was true but I was still kind of in denial about and that really helped. I'm at college, not out at college, um, but I know I'm going to have to, which absolutely terrifies me. <laughs> so definitely doing hormones in the future um, and top surgery. And it's just really nice to see how far I've come. Like, oh my god that's crazy. Like some of those entries were like when I used to use like sports bras to bind and then I moved on to binders and figuring it all out. The things that were real like turning points like the toilet and like talking to my mum, talking to counsellors, just like the details that I forgot and I don't, I don't know if I particularly want to remember it but it's, I can deal with it now because of how far I've come and it's just like, it's like a completely different life. I'm still the same person but it's I, like I'm living a completely different life like the one I was always meant to live. Oh that's cheesy, oh that's cheesy and I can't really speak so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm literally in a place that I couldn't have even dreamed of being in six and a bit years ago. Before I ramble anymore and just embarrass myself because for some reason I have lost the ability to speak coherently, I'm going to end the video. I hope this was useful. If anybody else is struggling, I hope this could help to show how things can change over time. And if you want to try writing things down to help you, you like, I don't know, sort of stuff out or, or be able to deal with it. I highly recommend just giving it a go. If it doesn't work for you, then just stop. Yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.